And joining me right now here on the Mark Moses Show, especially with Veterans Day coming up this weekend, this guy does a great job with his YouTube channel, <laughs> Video Game Collector. I'm one of his biggest fans, and, <laughs> and I Thanks. really appreciate him doing this. He's Mr. Rightway. My man, What's how up? you doing, man? What's up, man? Doing good, man. Just uh, thank you for the interview. Like I said, uh, you got me a good time because, man, lately I've been like suffering for like a little case of vertigo, man. Just it just hit me out of nowhere like a couple weeks ago and still going through it, but I'm good right now. Got me some good medicine, you know, and stuff, and I'm good right now. <laughs> well, it's good. good to hear, man. It really is. And I hope you feel better. Um, I will eventually. I, <laughs> I, I saw your video last night. I watched it. It's from a year ago where you talk about, and I want to start with this. You talk about how you were in the U S Navy and yeah. it's, it's a, I know it was very difficult for you to do, I appreciate you did that because I know there's a lot of veterans who are probably in the same boat as you, and it's good to tell that story. I know, and, I, and when I'm watching the video, there's a part there where you pause, and I know this was difficult. So I want to say thank you for doing that, and I'll post the link to that. But if you could tell the listeners, okay, so what was your background in the military? Oh, man, I was young, 18, 17, 18 <laughs> That was a long time ago. Mm. Excited. They told me I was going to go to Japan. I was like, all right, give me, let's go. Let's give me any kind of job, you know. And just, uh, I was a bosun mate. And then I was trying to get out. A bosun mate, basically, a janitor of the ship. They just tricked me. I'm like, oh, okay. I'm in Japan. I'm just doing all this. Like, whatever. Mm. Um, I was trying to strike out. The day I struck out was, you know, getting a new job. I was going to do a radio man. And I got hurt on my 21st birthday. So I lost my hand or lost my leg and my fingers tips on my hand and broke my hip. It's, it was just a big, bad accident. Yeah, it was. So how many years were you in the service then? Uh, two and a half, two and a half. And then that yeah. was, that was kind of the end of it after that. Right? That was the end. Of, yeah. I stayed like, you know, I, I kind of officially three, but you know, then I got out, you know, so mm. in 2000 officially. So called medical discharge because <laughs> i couldn't go back in and so yeah have from that video and i like you did like the cliff notes version there i appreciate that do you no get do you get veterans who who reach out to you or you know they appreciate you doing that where you talk about your story like that oh yeah a lot of times a lot of times yeah i do that's why i say I just feel i'm really kind of like a open book to certain parts mm -hmm. of my life and things i can i try to keep a lot of things you know you know, not hidden, but just not for everybody and stuff. But some things I like to talk about and because it can help some people, you know. What does Veterans Day mean to you then? Food. No. <laughs> <laughs> free food, man. Yeah. <laughs> I love the free food on Veterans Day. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> like, I love it. Listen, hey, Veterans eat free. I like, I take two. <laughs> That's what you do. Um, You know, as I host a sports show, when Army Navy play each other, are you like, oh. yeah, yeah, you got to root for Navy, right? All the time, yeah. But you know what? Um, I'm not a big uh, football. I've never been a big football fan. Mm -hmm. I always been more of like pro wrestling and UFC type of deal, you know? Oh, I saw your video where The Rock sent you a bunch of stuff. Oh, man, yeah. You see that belt back there, man? That Dude. was... No, seriously, for our listeners with Mr. Rightway. So you, I, did you message him on Twitter? What happened exactly? All right, so years ago, right, I got out of the military. I went to, I was, it was at WrestleMania 19 in Seattle, right? Mm. Uh, so I got there and the day I was going to get to meet the Rock, uh, my prosthetic just like messed up. So I had to get crutches and walk around and stuff, you know, got to the front line, did all that stuff. The Rock came out, got front row, got to meet him, talked to him. Awesome. Took a picture with him and lost it. And I'm what? like, what? Yeah. But let's let's, let's go past back. Yeah, let's let's uh uh back up. When Man. I was in the when I was in the Walter Reed, when I got out, you know, I got hurt. Uh they sent this WWE care package and they found out I like the rock and everything. So I'm like, okay, cool. Somebody autographed the rock's book, right? But it wasn't his autograph. Who was it? <laughs> I don't know. I guess somebody tried to do something to make me feel better. And I'm thinking the whole time it was, then, you know, and then I, t I tweeted about it and the rock said, that ain't my autograph, but I seen you a real one. I'm like, okay. So I'm thinking he going to send me like, uh, his team reached out to me, asked me in the clothes and size. I was like, okay, they probably going to send me some couple shirts and stuff like that. You know, yeah. go see the video, but the, the autograph he sent, boy, it blew my mind. I was like, really? 
I said, thank you, Dwayne. Thank you, Rod. That's my best friend now. <laughs> that is cool. And then he, you tweeted, did he like it or what happened on Twitter? His, I guess he saw his team uh, reached out to him. I sent pictures and everything about it and everything. He said he's going to make up for it. And like, I, that tweet got like, like 1.5 million like views. That's awesome, dude. That was That's like really crazy. Good. Did you keep the bootleg autograph? Do you still have? Yeah, I, I, the oh. book is upstairs somewhere in my attic. So yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. I like that. Um, how big is the Rock in person when you meet him? Oh, he's pretty well. He he much bigger now. So, but yeah. uh, he's a big it's, dude. He's a big dude. About like um, six five. You know, big dude. Did you? Okay, I'm gonna put you on the spot here with Mister Rightway because okay, so I watch all your videos and I just want right. to say this. So for me. I am talking sports pretty much 100% of the day. I love yeah. it with all my heart. That's my show. I talk entertainment as well. So what happens to me is, and this is a big deal, me talking to you. So every day after <laughs> well, thank work, you. So like every day after work, I go home, I make dinner. And then what I do to unwind is, I'm like, I have to get away from sports for like 45 minutes. So on my TV, I'll start watching your videos and other retro video game videos. So- I know all of your adventures and they're fantastic. <laughs> there's a part. Okay. So there's a part, my, my buddy, Tim and I, where we had a conversation where we're like, I think he got a girlfriend. Who's the new girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> he starts yeah. popping up. Oh man. Yeah. That's my favorite. Okay. The funniest thing you did. And I don't think you were trying to be funny. Okay. The best is you do a midnight release for tears of the kingdom for Zelda. <laughs> And it's yeah. a great, okay, so it's this great video. It's very nostalgic. You're there at midnight. Everyone's excited. The funniest thing you videotaped was afterwards, at the end, you drive by Best Buy and it's closed. And you're like <laughs> shaking your head. Oh, my God. I could <laughs> stop laughing when I saw that. Because <laughs> that's Best Buy. I'm like, really? That's why y'all in the shape y'all in now. Oh, man. Like, it was, a, like, okay. It was just so sad. Like, I, I'm like, really, Best Buy? Really? It was so funny because you're absolutely right. Because I like the midnight release. I that like them. Too. They're exciting because you just did one for the Mario game, right? Yeah. And I always try to just, because it, it just something to do, you know, but I noticed the Zelda one was huge. The Mario one was okay, but Zelda one was like crazy. I was like, wow, a lot of people out here. And I just like getting the excitement, talking to people, getting people excited for the game. Mm. And especially here in Dallas, you know, GameStop is like the corporations here. So was, they're going to do a little bit more and it's a lot more gamers, retro gamers here. Well, there's a lot more video game people here in, in, in Texas in the Dallas uh, Fort Worth area. So it's always going to find, I'm going to run into somebody, you know, collecting games, getting games. It's it's always fun. And I, I'm, GameStop is a touchy thing sometimes. I like GameStop, but some people don't because some of the things they do is kind of crazy. And so, yeah, I can see. So I try to separate the business from, you know, the experience and it's for me it's 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 easy but some people don't want to do that i i won't lie to you these the deal they had a couple weeks ago boy got, okay it got me re-energized to boy. buy video games you your video was so spot on because you're like look these are actual deals going on right now go get them you actually i'm so jealous you found that Callisto protocol special edition Dude. and i couldn't I couldn't find it anywhere. I was so man, jealous you got that. Man, everybody was everybody was getting those. Everybody was like just scooping those up. Um, I found two of the Horizon uh, uh, yeah. limited editions, you know, like the regular and then the collectors, whatever how you say it. Uh, it was the Pokemon one, and I got got two. Uh, the Pokemon. Uh, what is this? Let me hold on. Let me see. All right, he's got to see what it is. Yeah. We're here with Mister Rightway. He's showing me the collection. Yeah, here. the Pokemon right here. This uh, Scarlet and Violet. And I didn't even pick this up. And my nephew is pretty happy that I picked this up because me, we did like he wanted to be a YouTuber. So he loves Pokemon. I said, hey, look what I got. He like, oh, you got that. Like, so I got me one. So I got okay. one to trade, but like, it was 20, uh, like 20 bucks or something, 20, 25 bucks, or something like that. It was cheap. Here, here's what happened that night. So it was a Saturday night into Sunday morning. For some reason, I took a nap. So I I'm up. I couldn't fall asleep. So like okay. one o'clock Eastern time. I start looking at that site and I'm like, what's going on here? And I'm calling my buddies like, hey, you better get these deals like right now. 
So I actually got the Street Fighter VI Collector's Edition as well. Good, good job. Yeah, I do. So what's funny was, I tell this to everyone, so I make the purchase on my credit card, and the and Capital One's like, is this fraudulent? Why are you buying this at 1 o'clock? <laughs> so funny. You're like, no, I'm not. Go through. <laughs> Go through. So yeah. your video, fantastic explaining. Because I'm not kidding around. Those are the deals, like, for Black Friday. Like, give me a deal. I'm excited yeah, for this stuff. Do you feel that way? Oh, I am. I hope this year Black Friday would be good, but it's like that was a if that was a preview to Black Friday, man. I can't imagine what Black Friday going to be like because mm -hmm. Nintendo already starting to drop a little deals next week. You know, on, on Switch games. You know, Nintendo never ever uh, do deals on their games, never. And they like one or twice a year, and then they give you a holiday bundle, which this year might be really good. So I'll say, just. Look at GameStop. Just stay off of GameStop. You know, stay with me on Twitter or on Instagram or on YouTube. Because soon deals drop, I'm making a video about it. I like to make positive videos about GameStop. It's so easy to bash GameStop. It's so easy. It's easy, but it's what's not easy is telling the truth and like telling the truth but being positive. You know, yeah, I mean, they don't really care, but that ain't my business. My business is getting these games to the hands of people who watching the videos like go out and get these videos GameStop ain't all that bad stop letting yeah you know, some people who work in GameStop are terrible but look past that push past the feelings go get those deals but i'm telling you like this right here may be something in the future but you know i i'm i'm happy i got it you know it's pokemon you know just i you can I, find I, retro games that you just gotta go it's always like i would say video game hunting to me is like christmas every morning i never know what i'm gonna get you know I agree with you. Okay, because of you, I go to Goodwills now. Uh, because Thank you. Okay, good, I, good. I do. So I'll show you two real quick for our listeners. We're here with Mr. Rightway. I found this at a game store. What? I found this. dollars Yeah, five ninety. For some reason, every game is five ninety nine at Goodwill. If you notice this, that's what it is. In some some Goodwill. Hey, okay. So that that game in my good in one of my Goodwills would be like eight dollars. So that's a good deal. Yeah, this is Dragon Ball. Is it for Xenoverse? No, Dragon Ball Xenoverse. Yeah. So I looked up. It's about $25. Here's the other one at, at a Goodwill. Spider-Man 3 on PS3, right? Nice. Yeah. Nice. Well, and, that, and you know what? What about that game is? The Spider-Man games, uh, previous, if it says Activision, pick them up because Activision lost the license and they always going up. They, they hold their value. I think that game was around about 25 bucks. Mm-hmm. Okay, I will show you the craziest find of them all. You won't believe this, Mr. Rightway. All right, this is the craziest. This was at a um, a thrift store we go to, me and my coworkers, right? And it's it's one of those where the money gets donated to help out animals at an animal shelter. So it's really good. The, you won't believe this, and I've been waiting months to show you this. This, <laughs> so, this is one of those, it was $2, $2. You could tell it must have been the ex-girlfriend's getting back at her boyfriend for cheating on her. It must have been like, you know, screw this guy. Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess on Wii U for $2. <laughs> That's such a good pickup because that game right now is over $100. That's right. $2. Oh my. Dude, that's a good. That's a really good pickup. That's a yeah, really it is. good. We're here with Mr. Rightway. We're here on the Mark Mosey Show. My question for you is... It right. feels like in the last couple of years, your show has exploded and you're getting more subscribers and viewers. Do you feel like, and I ask this to everyone, do you feel because of the pandemic, guys our age, over 40 years old, do you think something happened where we're like, that's it, we're going to collect, we're going to get everything back, nostalgia? Do you feel that way? I think, Tom, uh, it's a little truth to that, but I think people were just needed some entertainment, needed some escapism. Mm. Uh, from the world and video games is a great escapism that's why i like wrestling too a very great, a great escapism you can like go and watch somebody hunt for games like oh i should have got that i need to go get that oh i feel like i'm right there with the person and then uh i try me i'm just always kind of energetic so I, I just just be me and people mm. like that so it's good but um i don't i think a little bit to that but i also say like now people who are age do have disposable income yeah. and like say we talked about earlier about the neo geo so we'll talk about it in a minute uh like dang i couldn't afford that when i was like 15 and working at like bonanza serving steaks and stuff but now 
that I'm an adult and I got some money. Oh, I can go buy that. You and then when you your... go buy it, you be like, oh, I can't believe I'm playing this. I waited 20 years to get this game. I couldn't believe it. Well, and that's what it is. Okay, my buddy Tim, we okay, so we debate this. Did you really find Earthbound at that Goodwill? We need. I did. To, I are did. you for real? How? I did. How is this I, possible, bro? That was crazy. So I was like, I went, and I, I, I got so nervous, and I was like, sometimes you find stuff, yeah. and this happened like twice that you get so nervous, and you don't want to record because you don't want to hack can't sell you that, or uh -huh. you just in the moment. And I just forgot because I was going in there looking for greatest hits, and I found one. I was about to walk out, and I always do a double check. And like I said, my spider senses start tingling. I looked over, and I saw three SNS games. I said, "Huh?" I said, "Hey, man, how much those the games?" It was a young cat. He didn't even know what my Super Nintendo was. I said, yeah. "Those were great games." And he got all oh, these three dollars a piece. I said, "Okay." So he handed them to me. So I'm looking. I said, "Oh yeah, Mario." And I saw something else, and then the last one, I like, Earthbound. I said, "My like, you know, like just draw hit the floor, like." And he said, "You want to?" I said, "Yeah." <laughs> so I just <laughs> handed ten dollars. I said, "Man, keep the change, but here." He said, "You don't know, just just don't no, donate it." And I walked out, and I was like just shaking. And I got in the car, told my girlfriend, "Look," and she said, "What?" And I said, "Look, look at this." No. And I said, no. <laughs> "I was like, I was like, wow." That's the, the, the last time that happened was. Um, it was like two years ago, and I found a sealed copy of Resident Evil Three, Ooh. in the CD section, and I was like, "Oh my gosh!" But I guess now Goodwill is kind of get you know they're smart. These yeah, they look in these videos like, "All right, we ain't trying to put too many games you know mm -hmm. in these locations so we can make money," which I understand. But y'all get it for free, so I don't know why they tripping. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. You get it for free. Why are you trying to like just let other people try to go get it? You know, just uh, it just. I don't know. It's it's that's the one part of good what I hate. I love you do the PlayStation Pursuit where mm -hmm. it's genius where you're just looking for greatest hits games. Great. Yeah, just this it. What were you driving and you're like, you know it'd be a great idea. Like how did you come up with this idea? What happened, buddy? Okay, so this is my whole thing about it is I'm all about doing stuff different mm -hmm. and People always hate on GameStop. I'm going to talk positive about GameStop. People always talk about crazy about the red labels or the green labels. I mean, who who said it was bad? Who got people, the collectors, thinking like this should be bad and this should be accepted as bad? You know, that's really silly thinking. Like, oh, because of aesthetic, it's red, it's lesser than, or I shouldn't do it, or you shouldn't do it. Like, no. Like, don't you know, like, if you get all the greatest hits, you're going to have a very good library of PlayStation games. Now, they just, you still can get like the Xeno Gears and the God, uh, a God Hand or like yeah. um, the other expensive super games like Marvel's Capcom 2. Yeah, you can get those, but to have all those and have a great list of stuff to play is great. The PlayStation 2 library is like over about 1,400 games like that, give or take. But they got some great games, and the greatest hits is probably about 300 if you count different variants and stuff. That's a lot of video, great video games just to have on your shelf. Then the PlayStation 1, then the PlayStation 3, then the PlayStation, I just finished the PlayStation 4. There's like 60 great games out of like, I mean, it's, it's still great. Why? Because it has a red banner mm. that makes the list. I don't get it. I, I would never get that. They're just something like things collectors just like, oh, I'm automatically going to go with that. No, it, it, it just, it, it doesn't, it doesn't vibe with me. I love it. Cause it's like, you kind of don't think about the greatest hits and then no, you you're, don't. you're giving it. It's like Sony needs to give you a thank you. Hey, it is <laughs> awesome. Here's all right. Because of you. All right. Here's what greatest hits I found. I got this. I want to start. So street alpha Ooh, three greatest that's... hits. You have okay, it. Alpha Three. So you know that game right there sold a million units on the PlayStation. A million units. Wow. All right. So yeah, I got that one. And then I I put this in an email for you, Mister Rightway. So in London, England, last time I was there, I thought of you because I saw this greatest hits for PS3 Resistance. I liked it. So it's Resistance Two, but then the colors different. Yeah. Greatest so hits. They platinum hits over in Europe. Yeah. 
So you, maybe you have to start that next. You need to go to Europe. Ooh, man, that's like 300 more titles. I don't know about that one. Okay, does this one, now I'm trying to impress Mr. Rightway. I, I had to get this. This is the European cover of Resident Evil. The, what is it called? The Origins Collections. So I had and to you know what's, that was so good about that, right, is mm. some of those games don't come to America, but no. on the PS4, they are they are like region free. So you can play it. I think I had, is it over here? Let me see it. What are these games? Hold on, let me see if I find it. All right, he's got to find it. We're here We're here with Mr. Rightway. Yes, Steve does a great job with his channel. You got to follow it on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, especially for Veterans Day where he's a Navy veteran. I, I had to get him on. He's a big, he, like, seriously, does a great oh, job. Yeah. All right, is he trying to find it? And when you yeah, see, okay. when you see the video of this, you get to see his collection behind him. All right, what do you got for me, <laughs> All buddy? right, so. Right, Here's something that didn't come out in America. That's uh, when I was in Japan. I got it. Mm. It came out digitally, but I wanted a physical copy. Uh, Devil May Cry Four Special Edition. Ooh, Japanese only, but it plays in it in in English. And then one of my favorite games on the PlayStation One, and it's physical, and it is only digital in America. Mm. Rapper the rapper, and you could play it on oh. HDTV. <laughs> that is awesome, dude. That and is- then lastly. Street Fighter Five, got a, just a different cover, I, but see this. Okay, this is what I like what you do with your channel. You could go on eBay and buy this stuff, but you're mm-hmm. like, no, I want to go on the adventure. I yeah. want to go in the wild and go find it. So mm-hmm. I liked one of your videos. You're trying to find, I think, NFL Blitz. Who knows? I can't find that game. That's two thousand on greatest. I need the last one. I need to find that one. It's hard to find. If it pops on eBay, I'm buying it. But I need to find it. That's all. That's the, like the last greatest hits on the PlayStation One. It's harder to find. I need that one. Um. Okay. Here's okay. This is the one I got in. It, it was the um the Dutch version of GameStop when I was in Amsterdam. So I had to get it for one euro. Right. So it's PS 2011 with Young Messi on the cover. So I like it's an all Dutch on the back. I had to buy it. I had Dude, to it's nice. It. Like having like those in the collection. Now, why it's you got nice. it? Oh, just because I. Okay, you bought that right. It's like mm-hmm. buying a shot glass when you go overseas. I'm just buying a game, you know? Exactly. Okay, <laughs> this one was at my brother's house. I bought this in college. Didn't know he still had it. I thought I lost it, okay? I'm amazed by how expensive this is. My original copy of Silent Hill 2 on PlayStation 2. Yes, okay, so let's talk about that. Uh-huh. The the greatest hits version of Silent Hill 2 actually has more content and what? a lot of fixes that that game don't have. I love this. And it's still around the same price. So okay. that's what I'm saying. Back in the day, we did back in the day, guys, we didn't have the internet. You know, you still plug the controllers in and you didn't get like updates. So the updates came out on a different disc. <laughs> and my final one to try to impress Mr. Rightway, I got this in college at a video store. Oh, snap. And I love this game. My copy of Metal Gear Solid on GameCube. Okay. It's so good. I love it's it. So good. Is it? It doesn't, it never came with the instruction manual. Is it, is it less? How's, how's the disc on it? Is the disc like crackly around the circle of it? All right. I'm or is it still it smooth? I always say how oh, you got to take out the GameCube. It's pretty smooth. No, so, look at the top, the top of it, the top of the artwork. Okay. Top, there's the top of the artwork. How does it Okay. Look? So look, look, can you look at the top of yourself? Can you put your, run your finger on it? Is it still smooth? Yes. Okay. Good. So you got a good copy. Those copies of those games sometimes, uh, that was like a few of the GameCube games that mm. the top cover artwork wasn't really good on it. It like it flaked off like years later. So if you're still holding up that, you got a really good copy. Let's end with this with Mr. Rightway. And I appreciate you coming on. And and happy Veterans Day, by the way, Bob. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'm gonna put you on the spot. There's Uh-oh. no wrong answers here. What's the greatest video game of all time? Ooh. <laughs> People will say Mario three Mario World, but the new uh Mario Wonder game is giving a run for his money. I mean you got you gotta put a Mario game, you can put Tetris. Uh <laughs> I would say Balatos and make some people mad because that game is hard. <laughs> <laughs> uh Street Fighter is so I can't really say it, but I really can't say what's the greatest of all time. It's a debate. It's, it's a debate. Yeah, but people was probably say something like Mario, Tetris, you know, Sonic the Hedgehog, you know, something like that. Sonic 2 probably. Uh, that's a lot of good games, you know. Mario I, 64, 
you know, it's, it's just depending on when you grew up, when it came out, the length. It's so you could say Pac Man, you know, you just it's got so see, many. Okay, so my thing is, okay, uh, what's it called? And I'll let you go. I have my favorite games of all time, like Resident Evil 2. I just love it so much. It just has so much nostalgia being in high school. I love it. And my thing is, did you create a great game? And then did you create a genre as well? Like Mario Brothers, the first game. Yeah. The thing is based on that. Everything. Like you side scroller and you here's the objective and here's levels and here's cheats. Same thing with Legend of Zelda. Like that's the first time. I mean, it still holds up today. You can play it and everything. Like here's the dungeon. You got to go get this key. Like, and my other one, like, I love Mortal Kombat with all my heart. And, <laughs> and like, and it's, you know, coming from Chicago and knowing that it was made like down the street for me, it there's like, and being able to meet a lot of the actors who made the game, like it means yeah. a lot. It does. Um, same thing with NBA jam being from Chicago. So, but I, something about street fighter too, because that street made, fighter two is amazing, man. So many amazing. hours. Oh my goodness. It changed the game. Just, just like Resident it, Evil, it changed the game. It because it's all every fighting game is based on Street Fighter Two. Everything, even I love that one woman made all the music for that game. One woman, like just on a keyboard, like. And I still, I don't know about you. There are sometimes this is the nerdiest thing I will tell Mister Rightway. Getting ready for work, sometimes I'll put on my Street Fighter or my Marvel vs. Capcom arcade one up, and I'll just listen to the you Dude, know the music so good, especially. Yeah. Ooh, that what want to take you for a ride? That that song or just uh that's a banger. That's Marvel like vs. Capcom 2. I yes. dude, the first video I ever saw of you was when you do the Marvel Superheroes Arcade One Up review. Oh yeah, that was a pretty good that's when they was doing okay. Now okay one up like uh that was the first yeah. one. I'm I keep the cabinet because I love the Punisher. I love that game. And that game is good, isn't it? That's the that's the reason I have it. And um, I agree with you, Arcade One Up. I I love them, and I feel like if I sell them, I know in two years they'll be worth two thousand dollars a piece. I know something crazy is gonna happen. I don't think so. Not with those. You know, just so many. I, I I still have a Kill Instinct and a Turtles One. Mm -hmm. I sold the rest, like the NBA Jam and all that kind of. They went quick, but it's in there. Like we need something else, some more. You know, I agree. Because the home arcade scene is is okay. But it just it's flat right now. And they did a lot of mistakes and they kind of like just turned their backs on like a lot of the community people and stuff. It's just well, I'm not gonna spend know. look, the price point was three to four hundred. Now it it's eight hundred. I'm not paying eight hundred. Yeah, I'll go get the real machine at <laughs> like the seven eleven or something. All right. Yeah. What how can we check out your stuff? And is there any links here? The floor is yours, buddy. Oh yeah. If you want to um, hit me up, hit me on YouTube. YouTube has everything. Even have a nice donation page there, you know, for your boy on Veterans Day. You know, subscribe is the best thing you can do on YouTube. Find me there. Uh, all my channels. I'm going to say always do it the right way. And right now, I am collecting super expensive Neo Geo stuff. So y'all pray for your boy. Oh, man. Get you, Art of Fighting, Fatal Fury. I love all those games. I love them yeah. so much. Um. Well, thank you so much for coming on. And, dude, I hope I can get you on again sometime. Anytime. Thank you so for the invite. I appreciate it.